In this GeoGebra tutorial, I wanted to explore uh, one of the very useful features in GeoGebra for students, for teachers as well, but it's something that if students can become comfortable with, they can really get a lot of use out of it. And that is the idea of uh, making use of functions and transformations of functions. And the basis for this is something known as the slider bars. And so I'm going to be making use of the uh, generic form of a function and then I'm going to assign different parent functions uh, and we're going to be able to look at the transformations of those and I'm going to do them all in a single screen. So uh, when I do transformations of functions with my class I use the parameters a, k, p, and q to represent the uh, different transformations. So I'm going to start, Just I'm just going to go ahead and put on some sliders. I'm going to start with the slider a which is going to be my vertical scaling and uh, and any reflection and I'll add another slider and that one I'm gonna call K and same thing except for that's for horizontal then I will add a slider for the uh, translations so that will be the slider P and that's going to be horizontal and then I'll add one last slider and that will be the slider Q and that's for vertical translations so over here at the side I've got AK uh, P and Q and now I'm going to uh, construct some parent functions and so why don't I put on uh, I'll do something simple so down in my input bar I'm going to say now I actually I'm going to use um, I'm going to use several functions here so I'm going to start off with a quadratic so I'm going to put in Y or sorry I'm going to say uh, F of X is equal to no actually let's let's start off with I'm gonna start off with f of x is equal to x to the power 2 so that's my parent function for a quadratic now if I want to apply transformations to that parent function I would put in the equation just as we would in class y equals a times f of bracket and now in that bracket I'm actually gonna put k bracket x minus p close bracket, close bracket, plus Q. So that is the transformed function. And you can see that that transformed function has actually already shown up. Now to keep things clear, I might want to take my parent function and change its properties. And in this case, I'm going to change its line style. So I'm going to use dotted lines to represent my parent functions. So there's my parent function, and there's my transformed function as a solid line. And I can go over here and I can actually manipulate uh, the sliders to introduce transformations of that particular function. So let's, uh, I'll just leave them all at one for now. That's, uh, that's fine. You might want to make your sliders, you can see I'm having a little trouble actually getting myself back to one there. If you make your sliders longer, and I'll show you how to do that, you can have a little bit more control over how they look. So let's take a look at another uh, function that I would cover in my my 3u math course and I'm gonna call so I'll, I'll add another parent function g of x and in this case let's do the square root of x so uh, sqrt of bracket x so there's another parent function and that parent function again object properties style and I'm gonna just turn that into a, a, a dotted line as well and now let's put in the transformation of that function y equals a times g of k bracket x minus p bracket bracket plus q and now I've got I can transform and this time I'll do a vertical transformation now you can see that both of them are transforming and so things are going to start to get pretty cluttered depending on how many I add in here so one of the things you can do is you can actually uh, you can make things disappear these little uh, circles to the left of each of the items in the algebra window I can click on those and I can make things appear or disappear so I can actually take out the uh, the quadratics and now I'm just left with my I'm left with my radical and I could do the same thing uh, let's do h of x is equal to the reciprocal function 1 over x and I there's my graph and oh and because of the way I did things I just replaced my previous so I have to be careful with naming here by putting in h of x, I actually just clobbered my transformation of the uh, 
of the radical. So you might want to be careful with your naming. Perhaps you might want to put in all of your parent functions first. So um, I don't like the idea i of x, j of x, uh, sorry, h, yeah, so let's do uh, j of x is equal to, and what's another function that we might want to uh, transform? How about, uh, well, okay, actually I'm going to take a step back. We might want to do exponential functions. And if we're going to do exponential functions, we're going to want another slider. And that slider is going to represent the base, b, but the minimum for the base should be, I'm going to say, 0.1. Now you have to be careful, oh, not too careful, I guess. Um, I was going to say we have to avoid uh, the base of one, but that's not a huge issue because that'll just give us a flat line. So I'm gonna put in my base, so that's gonna perform the base of my exponential function. And then I'm gonna say that h uh, j of x is equal to b to the exponent x. So that's a generic exponential function. You can see with b equal to one, it's actually just a straight line. But if I make it something more like b equals two, which is a fairly standard exponential function. There's our nice exponential function. So let's go back and actually, I'm going to delete this. I'm gonna put back in all of my parent functions. And I'm going to actually get rid of my transformed functions. There we go. Oh j of x is 2 to the x, so that, that one has to stay. So here are all of my parent functions, so I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to look at the object properties for each of them, and I'm going to change them all to be dot, uh, dotted lines. So there's all of my parent functions, all as dotted lines. These transformations don't do anything to these parent functions except for we can still modify the exponential function by changing the b value. So now let's put in our transform functions. Now that all of our parent functions are in place, so f and g and h and j are all assigned, we could assign values to our parent functions. We could be very uh, deliberate about this. So why don't I go ahead and do that? So I'm going to say that the function s of x is equal to my transformed quadratic. So that's going to be a times, and in this case my quadratic was f bracket k bracket x minus p, close bracket, close bracket, plus q. And that just added the transformed quadratic. I could add, so I did s, how about t of x is going to be equal to my transformed radical. So that's going to be transformation of g. a times g of bracket k bracket x minus p bracket bracket plus q. And there's my transformation of the radical. Things are going to get cluttered here. And uh, so t, how about u of x, is going to be equal to my transformed reciprocal. So that's the transformation of h. Now I actually don't have to keep putting the a times here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that GeoGebra can actually handle just uh, a h. I'm going to put a space there just to be on the safe side. h of x, but it's going to be h k bracket x minus p close bracket close bracket plus q. Yep. So it handles that just fine. And then my final one is going to be v of x is equal to, um, that's going to be my exponential. So that's the transformation of j. I'm going, to, I'm going to gamble here and I'm going to try it without the uh, space there in front. So I'm just going to say a j k x minus p bracket bracket plus q. I'm not hopeful here, but no, it didn't like it. Didn't like the a j. So we at the very least have to leave a space there or to be more deliberate, we can put in a sign for multiplication. So I've got all of these things, it's really cluttered here, but if I, and now I'm just gonna focus on my exponential. So I'm gonna get rid of everything except for the exponential. And I can just make things disappear until I get down just to the parent function for the exponential and my transformed. So let's uh, shift that around. So you can see it sliding, shifting around and shift it this way. And the nice thing about this is if you look over into the algebra panel, we actually are seeing the equation of the transformed exponential function. So you can see I've got it shifted. When I set p equal to, let's say three, I am shifted to the, if I can get on to three here, close enough, 2.9. 
I've shifted to the right by 2.9 and if I take a look at my actual function you can see in the exponent itself I have x minus 2.9 which shows that horizontal shift if I shift it up by 1 let's shift it down by 1 it shows up a little bit more nicely there is the minus 1 on the end of the function so you can see you have a lot of versatility here not only to represent functions graphically and to dynamically change those functions but you can also uh, do some practice of function notation itself and uh, that can also be very useful for I think this is more useful actually for students uh, to construct these things and to actually see how those transformations uh, play out okay so that's it for this tutorial